morning. Thank you so much for being here, and I will keep my eyes open for anybody else that um, pops in. Uh, right now, I want to talk about the holiday season. I want to talk about why the holiday season is one continuous path and how you might use it that way to move people through a series of activities that are really um, really help them to see the continuity in their life. Because we kind of take these holidays as uh, almost a leapfrog, right? We go from Halloween, oh, then it's Thanksgiving, then it's Christmas, and now we're into New Year's Eve and on into the new year. And we, we kind of do that leapfrog thing without really understanding that it's one road we're walking. So I want to spend some time today showing you how you might position that for your community and also how you might position it in your own life, how you might really actually see that this is a spiritual adventure that you can move through. So most of us know that we, we just crossed Halloween yesterday. Most of us understand that Halloween originated as a celebration of the ancestors. And it's an opportunity for us to look at, at death and release, what is going away, and also to think about the space that happens right after death, which is a bit of emptiness, isn't it? When something dies, before we get to being grateful for what it was in our life or what that person was in our life or that pet or that home or that job, we have a period of emptiness where there's space where something else used to be. And so when you look at your life and you think about the fact that your life is so full, there's so many things going on in your life, we rarely talk about the period that in nature is empty. When the leaves fall and the tree branches are empty, when growth is not happening and there's emptiness, you don't have to go out and mow the lawn anymore because the grass isn't growing. There's an emptiness, there is a natural space that comes into your life. And um, we, we generally, as human beings, especially in Western culture, have a real desire to fill that space quickly. Jump in, fill that space, let's, let's make sure there's not too much emptiness there. I wanna invite you to just consider that where you are right now, in the nature cycle of your life. And if you, if you will, consider that nature is not separate from you, that you are one with nature, that you are an animal mammal on the planet, like everything else, like, like all the other mammals. And um, we happen to have certain work to do here. Other mammals have other work to do here. Our work allows us to have self-awareness. Our spiritual self allows us to have self-awareness and that means that we can be aware of things like this emptiness and ask ourselves, what happens in the emptiness? How quick do I want to fill up this space? I'm not mowing the lawn. What else? And how many of you think, oh gosh, I don't have to take care of the outside. Now I can finally take care of the inside of my house, right? So we immediately want to fill that space. But in times of opening, there's an opportunity to reflect on life, there's an opportunity to heal. There's an opportunity for stillness and uh, for quiet. And you are moving toward that. And so in order to slow down, we sometimes have to let ourselves kind of stop filling the space and let the space be there. Just notice, hmm, I don't have anything I have to do right this minute, right? So I want to just invite you to consider what space is in your life, what it means for you. So in October, when we're working in our congregations, we have the opportunity to do two things, to, to bring people to an awareness of their ancestors and also to honor the lives that have been lost, um, the change that has happened in our lives because death is not always a loss of people or a loss of life. Sometimes death is the loss of a marriage 
or it's the loss of a friendship, a friend moves away, or it's the loss of a job. But it's an opportunity to look in a healthy way at what happens when something ends and to talk about impermanence in our lives. And one of the ways that you can do that in your community is you can create an altar space for the month of October where people can bring pictures of their ancestors or they can place a token on that table or altar space that you set up that is symbolic of what has died in their life in the last year or what they wanna celebrate. Often people will bring their dad, their mom, a, a child that they lost, someone who they are still grieving. They will bring it to that space. What I have found is it so important about creating that space for your community is if you do it consistently year after year, your community does not have to have to live in the space of worry that if they stop grieving, they will forget. And we have that as human beings. When we have a loss, we are afraid to stop grieving because what if I forget that I'm supposed to be grieving? What if I forget them? So the longer I grieve them, the more that I will remember. And so one of the things that you can do with that table is you can let people know you can count on this every year. As long as I'm here, I'm consistently going to put up this space. If you work in an environment around people and you're not ministering, you can do this for the people that work with you. You can just set a separate table, put a nice drape on it and tell them what you're doing and let them know that the, every year for you, you will set up that space so that people know consistently they can remember their loved ones. We will always celebrate your loved ones in October. It's amazing how much that helps to deal with the deathing process all through the rest of the year because they know if they lose somebody in November, December, January, February, that October, we're going to come back around to honoring that person or that process again. So death might seem like a funny place to start the year, but it's the end and the beginning at the same time, right? On the spiritual path, we allow things to move out and we open up to space because creation happens in space. Creation rarely happens when we're full. Creation happens when we open up and actually have space to allow ourselves to express in a different way. So we move into November with space and our society takes us by, by the nature of Thanksgiving into a space of considering gratitude. So death happens, we have a little space to move through it and we can be grateful or many things, how most people move through grief and get to a place of center is they find their way to gratitude. Gratitude for everything that has happened. So this, this you can see how just this first two, these first two events tie one to the other. We're grateful for the ancestors. We're grateful for the people that were part of our life, for the pets, for the job, for the friends, for all of the things that have blessed us, we are in gratitude. So when we take our people into gratitude that way, and we speak about where we were in October and what we're grateful for, and we give them an opportunity to express that, it helps them to heal from the loss. So how one of the ways that you can do that is you can do something really simple and have a gratitude journal in your lobby and invite people to write in write three or four sentences in the gratitude journal. You can put your name with it or not, but write those few lines in your gratitude journal and let us know what you're grateful for. And then as the minister, you can come up to the platform every week and read a few things with names or without names. Um, there, let me just read a little bit of you, of what I can find in our gratitude journal. Read it in advance because some people there, you'll start to read it and it's not legible and you'll feel bad because you started reading something and you can't complete it. So read it in advance and make sure that the things that you share are things that you can read clearly and that they're appropriate for the community. But as you share people's gratitude each week, 
you open the whole community to think about what they're grateful for. And this is the natural way that we move from death into acknowledgement. So when we, when we move from November to December, we're going from the celebration of death into gratitude for what we have into a quieter period, right? Everything around us in nature is quieter. We might not be quieter because we kind of get caught up in the hustle and bustle, but we're at really kind of at the, the position where we have the least relationship with nature at that time. So talk about filling space. Like we have to shop and put up trees and do all of that. We bring nature inside. We do all of that stuff because the idea of resting is antithetical to what we believe in Western society. We are supposed to be doing something. Something is supposed to be happening. So I want to remind you that you have the opportunity from gratitude to go into a time of more quiet contemplation. And you can do that by using meditative, maybe you use a guided meditation each week. There's a lots about the birthing story that gives you an opportunity to talk about silence, about stillness, about what precedes birth. Because if, if you've had a child or you've been around someone having a child, there's a natural period in the body where the body slows down and gets very still. The baby gets very still. Most mothers, especially first time mothers are afraid they might have lost their baby because the baby stops kicking right before birth because the baby is naturally saving its energy to be birthed, to go through the birthing process. So there's this time of rest that is really important to preparing for the celebration of birth that we celebrate. And if you can even keep that quiet, imagine you've got an infant in your house. It's a quiet time because we really stay in winter all the way through to about February. We celebrate this birthing of the Christ consciousness within us versus the infant who is now alive and we have to spend all of our time taking care of them. We are birthing our own Christ consciousness. And that is a contemplative process. It's, it's almost like we're staying in the silence, preparing for the birth that will happen in spring. And it's a, it's a challenge to find the right words for this. You really have to put yourself in the place of birthing your Christed self versus birth, the birth process that happened for Mary and Jesus to be able to do this. But you, you are moving people into a period of deep contemplation about their own spiritual self. What is your spiritual journey? When you think about yourself as a Christed being, as the Christ moving and living in human form, what does that mean? So if you take them through guided meditations, if you take them through even a period of extended silence, we do our meditations all the time in our services, but to actually give them a period of extended silence to let their body feel what it means to be in stillness, to let them not think about it, but actually feel in their body that all of nature around us on our hemisphere is still right now. Things are not growing, they're not moving. They're still, they're breaking down rather than building up. So on our spiritual journey, there's a place of going from death to gratitude to rest and contemplation. And this again follows the cycle of nature, doesn't it? When we lose someone, we come out of it on the other side through gratitude. And then we go into contemplation about our own mortality. Who am I? What matters to me in my life? Who will I be as I live into my life without this person or this facet can even be a facet of myself that died, right? As something that I was or I was expressing as that I'm letting go to move into a new space. 
So this period of contemplation of our own Christed journey is really powerful. And yes, you could do this any time during the year, but all of nature is set up to be still and quiet so that you can find the quiet of yourself in the winter months. And we tend to go into the into what we think of as New Year's resolutions. What am I going to create? But that's not where we are in nature. In nature, in January, we're in the period of dreaming and imagining. We're still, it's still dark outside. It's the darkest time of the year. It's hard to get out of bed in the morning. It's cold outside. We don't want to get up. We're going to stay in bed under the covers where it's warm. And we want to doze back off into that sleepy space, that kind of peaceful, amazing space where dreams come easily. So how you position New Year's is really important. If you position New Year's as, yes, write that, that burning bowl letter about what you're going to create. That's very different than saying, write this burning bowl letter from your deep imagination of what's possible for you. Dream into what could happen in your life. Allow yourself to go into this meditative state where you're writing this letter and be in that dreamy space. What it feels like when you just woke up from a great dream and you just want to close your eyes and go right back to sleep and dream back into something that is different than what you might think in your head. Be in the dream space. You have come from your Christed self. Dream from your Christed self into this time of the year. It's very different to do that. And let them dream into the season of love. You have the opportunity to take them from dreaming their potential into a conversation about self-worth and self-love. We tend to, to look at that February time as the time of relationship. But in reality, in the natural process of life, the next challenge that we face after we dream of a possibility in our life, the next process that we face is the fear that we don't deserve that potential. The fear that somehow we're not good enough or whole enough or advanced enough or whatever it is to actually express that Christed being that we all are. So February is an opportunity for you to really work on self-worth and self-love and being worthy of what you want to dream into the manifesting season of spring. When we move beyond self-love, assuming that we've done that, we can actually take our dream from potential to conception, right? Like I have really conceived this. It now exists in my body as a real possibility to bring forth. And I always like to throw in here we use the story of immaculate conception at a different time in the year, but in the spring, that's when conception happens in the planet. All of the, the leaves that have, have now gone down on the ground are breaking into food, and the seeds that were released during the fall are now down in the soil. They are actually now starting to receive melting snow and starting to, to soften. This is a time where the seed is planted. And when we talk about immaculate conception, we talk about this amazing, miraculous thing that happened where spirit provided the seed for Mary to bring forth the Christ child. But we don't think about the fact that immaculate conception happens for us all the time. Every time we dream into ourself, some potential that we pulled from divine mind, divine heart, from the divine center into our being, we have now immaculately conceived the seed of something that we can bring forth into the world. And to understand that in its metaphoric way is very powerful for people. Once you get them to the place that they feel worthy of conceiving the dream of the divine. So we take them from self-love into the idea that you the idea that came to you in your dream time came through the mind and heart of the holy into you because you are worthy of bringing it forth into the world. You have conceived the seed of the holy. 
And this thing that you're dreaming of bringing into your life has more than just you behind it. It has the whole of the universal heart bringing it forward. You are the receiving party to, to begin creating this. And that is a powerful vision for people, especially coming out of a month of teaching about self-worth. So from conception in the, in the place of birth, we go into what's called the quickening or the awakening. It's when a mother feels the first little flutters in her stomach. Oh my gosh, there's something actually, I know I'm pregnant, but there's something actually there. And in human life, that quickening, that little process can be celebrated around the spring equinox, which is usually March or early April, but most of the time in March. Um, so you come into that quickening time and qu the quickening is when it becomes real. Like when you feel that and you, you go, oh my gosh, that's a, that's a something happening there. <laughs> then what, what we're working on with our people is a conversation about the, the very first steps of planning into manifesting something. Because when it becomes real is when we start to think about buying baby clothes, right? We start to think about where the baby's going to sleep and what we need to have and all of that. The same thing is true for us when we move in, when we move from conception into the time of spring awakening, we start to feel more energized. The light changes in March and we start to feel like we want to get up out of bed in the morning. Just watch yourself. You'll notice it. You'll, you'll be like, wow. I was sleeping so late. Now I'm waking up at seven o'clock in the morning. It's natural because the, the earth under your feet is waking up and life is beginning to come forward. And even in Colorado, where I leave, where, where I live, we see the very first turning of the grass and all of that happen in March. And then it snows over it and it unsnows and it snows again, <laughs> but it's in in that March period, the very first sign that we're in spring starts to come forward and we feel different. So now is the time to begin to work with your community on the idea that they are powerful creators, that something is awake and alive in them that wants to come forward in this season and to help them do that. And it, it can you can teach about anything and talk about manifestation because we are manifestors. This, we are imaginers and namers of things and manifestors. So we're in our most, most natural time of the year when we talk about our creative collaboration with the divine. And it takes, I want you to think, everything on, the, on our hemisphere has come completely still. And that very little seedling has to crack open, move out into the darkness, search for the warmth and find its way all the way through the soil to pop up above where it can get the, the sun. It's a big journey. And it's one of the hardest things nature ever does is to start the system of growth up again in the spring. It's challenging to bring something, to bring a seed of an idea to manifestation. Once you get above the soil, the sun will pull you up into blossoming. But there's a period of uncertainty. I don't know which way is up. I don't know where the warmth of the sun is. I don't know which way I'm going. In the time of awakening and, and up through April into the time of emergence, we are in that space of uncertainty. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. It's a great time to talk about how we live in uncertainty, how we move through uncertainty, because the whole energy of the planet is working with you at that time. And you have lots of metaphors available to you to teach from. So we move from there into April and now end of March, beginning of April, somewhere in there, we're going to have Easter. <laughs> and we're suddenly going to go from, oh my God, we're in this season of wonder and amazement and birth and all of that stuff and now we got to go through the process of how Jesus died and what happened nah, 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 all the way to resurrection 
So all of, again, that language, right? That language is the language of barrier, challenge, confrontation. So we're now talking about in the manifesting process of our life, in the growth and moving forward, whether we're manifesting something new or we're just growing ourselves, we're talking about how we handle all the barriers to the thing that we see is ahead of us, self-doubt. Great time to talk about self-doubt. Great time to talk about naysayers. All of the people in life that will tell you, you are not worthy of doing this. So you see the continuation of what you learned in February around self-love and moving now into an awareness that you are worthy to bring this forward and that there will be challenges that come up. Then we go into Easter and what happens? We have emergence. We have emergence of Christ consciousness. We have, we have literally moved from birth to death to rebirth in, from December until April. And we are taking people along that journey in a way that is applicable to their life today. That's not just the story, but is really applicable to their life. So when we move into, into that period of emergence, we're talking about what it looks like when your Christ consciousness that you brought to life, that came through you, that you have nurtured these last four months, actually starts to be the hands and heart and eyes and living movement of the divine in your body. This is a great time to take your people into some kind of community service to go out and let them be their Christ itself. Let them move into that. Then what, when that little plant has gotten above the soil, our concept, we understand that we're growing something. And we say that the sun will pull that plant forward. The, the heat of the sun will keep going up and up and up and up. The, the light will increase and we will grow in consciousness you're setting people up to grow in consciousness all through the months of May and June. You're setting them to grow in consciousness of the reality of who they really are. Now we've moved through the whole holiday season, haven't we? And we're, we're into summer and we're thinking, ah, easy. I finished the holidays. We have birth Christ consciousness. People have had their resurrection. Now let's relax. But I want to take you a little farther into it because we have a way of looking at this time of the year and assuming that now we're in summer, everybody's on vacation, we don't need to do too much. We just need to keep them there. We just need people to show up and figure out how they're going to still be part of church while they're traveling to wherever they're traveling to. Thank goodness for Zoom. What, what's happening for us is the highest natural season of growth in May and June up until the summer solstice. The sun is at its highest zenith. We reach the zenith of the sun around the 21st of June. It is the time that growth happens most naturally on the earth, and we all cut out and go on vacation. So it's an opportunity for you as a person to really look at what have you been trying to grow? What was the dream? So we make the mistake in unity of sending out our letters um, the letters that were written in, during the burning bowl, we like to send them out in July. I want to suggest that you send them out the beginning of June because this is when people need to remember what their dream is because they are the most, they have the most natural energy around them and in them to create that dream during the time that the sun is at its highest, that we have the most light because the frequency and energy of light stimulates our mind and our body. That's just science. We know that. So we want them thinking about the dream they're bringing forward when they have the most energy to create it. And if you look at what happens in June, the plants come up, the, the flowers flower, and then the fruit starts to happen. And in July, the fruit begins to be on the vine. It's already fruit, right? By mid-July, things are green, but they're on, they're on the vine. We don't want to tell them then it's too late. You're out of the season of creating. Go do this during June. <laughs> so you grow what you want to grow. And we can talk to them also about what they need to weed out of their life. What do you need to weed out? 
to grow what you need to grow right now. In July, we're in the season of ripening. That's what happens. Nature ripens in July. That's a great time to take vacation. Rest in the sun. Go sit in the sun. Be still. Relax. Wonderful time for vacation. Because it is the season of ripening. And when we ripen, we become soft. We become sweet. We become tasty in life. We can have some fun. And by August, we're in the season now of harvesting. Everybody's coming back from their summer vacation. They've gotten, especially by about the middle of the month, because a lot of places school is starting then. It's a really good time to do an event that allows people to do a blessing for the church. Um, I like to do a water blessing. Some people will do flower blessings where they'll put up a big flower pot and everybody brings one flower. And each person comes to the mic on the platform and sets their flower in and says, speaks a blessing. What I learned this summer is this. I bring the blessing of a great adventure back to the church this year. But you get a chance to say, this summer I went so-and-so and I, I'm bringing back a blessing of family. I'm bringing back, back a blessing of connection or I'm bringing back a blessing of, of laughter People get a chance, and by the time you're all done, you have this beautiful bouquet of flowers, all different kinds of flowers that came from all different kinds of people and all different kinds of experiences and really demonstrate the beauty of the blessings that the community gives to itself, to the community body as a whole. And then you're back into September and you're into a season of release. The leaves are gonna fall, things are gonna slow down, You've gone through a whole cycle of creation and you have an opportunity to start to think about what you created, what you want to take forward, what you want to let go of before you go back into the season of honoring what has passed. And this, this is the life cycle. We get into the later years of our life, past the years of, of productivity in society, and we begin in the autumn of our life and into the winter of our life to reflect on who we've been and what we've done, what our legacy is to the world, what is important about our presence on the planet. And, and we begin to look at what the stories are that we want to pass down before we're gone from here. This is a really good time to talk with people about their legacy, about what the gifts are that they bring. So you go from what is the gift that you just gained during your summer vacation, tell us about what, the blessing you brought back to what is the gift you are in this community? Who are you as a legacy member of our community? In your life, what is the legacy? What did your family give you? What have you, what are, have you given to your family? Who are your friends? Who are the people? And that sets you up to notice who's not at the table anymore and brings you back around to the death and rebirth place that October is. So, so I offer you all of this because I just took you in your mind from where we were last night, all the way back around the whole of the year and connected every single month to where we are as living human beings. And this is the thing that I think we miss in our holiday journey. We miss that this whole process is that, that we are teaching in our churches and all of the stories that we tell and all of the topics that we use and all of the, the journey that we take people through, we miss that it's all connected. That we have to take people from empty space through the birth of their Christ consciousness into the creation that Christ consciousness invites all the way back around to release of what is not necessary and refining gratitude, rest, birth, conception, birth, growth, release, death. We live it over and over and over again, don't we? Every single year. When you are planning your year, what you'll speak about next year, 
I'm going to make sure that you all have this recording. You have this slide to look at. The slides are always attached to these recordings. So you can just download the slide. It's just one slide. You can download it and you can look at it over and over again. Look at the topics that you're thinking about, speaking about, and ask yourself if they fall in line with where the planet is and with the process of life. Because it's, it's great to teach people about Christ consciousness. It's great to teach people that they are God expressing, but we need to give them more than that. We need to give them the tools that let them actually cultivate that expression. And this process will do that. So we went, we have about 15 minutes left to our time. And I want to now ask you, first of all, how that feels to you. And I want to know um, if you have questions about all of that. My, my December stands out to me. December, you put the word rest there, but that sure is a challenge for us all. <clears throat> Yeah. That month of the year. Yeah, for sure. December and yeah. the summertime are the times that we're in, in June, are the times that we're in opposition of the energy of the planet. We are completely in our in our Western culture, we are completely out of line with what the earth below our feet is telling us. We have the least amount and we have the least amount of light and energy to energize our bodies. And we rely on that for health, for lots of things. Everything, everything in us says, sleep later, conserve energy. You don't have as much rest. Our natural body is going to tell us to do that without us even thinking about it. Our biology will tell us you don't have as much energy to draw on. And yet we push so hard to go to all the parties and do all the things and have all the presents. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's a crazy, it's so you can still have all of that. If you know you're keeping peace, if you plan your life and you say, what is really important for me to attend and what is not important for me, where am I attending by obligation instead of by joy and desire? So we can, we can help ourselves by slowing down. We can help ourselves by not using winter vacation to do the thing that we haven't gotten done yet, to actually let it, let ourselves Take a nap in the afternoon because that's what we really want to do. Bye, Jackie. Thanks for being here. Um, we have an opportunity to rest in that period and it's self-awareness, right? It's us who are birthing. Think about this. This is when we birth Christ consciousness. What is more important than that? On our spiritual journey, in the work that we do with our communities, what is more important than helping them? rest so that they can birth their Christ consciousness and actually feel it, actually have awareness of it and, and be in that. And so an, another way that can be really good, another piece of work that you can do that can be really good for helping them with this is to use Wayne um, Mueller's book, Sabbath, starting from Thanksgiving, because it really was written around the, the around gratitude but you can do a book study of Wayne Mueller's book into the month of December, started in, in November and move into December. It's all full of teachings around how to slow down, how to understand what Sabbath is and why Sabbath is important. And when you correlate that, the, the kind of traditional church teaching of Sabbath and the day of rest, with the month of rest and the preparing for the birth of Christ consciousness, it lines up really nicely and is really helpful for people. And in, you know, in June, like I said, we are at the sun is at its zenith. We have the most natural energy. Our bodies are the most energized during that time. And we drop all of our work and go on vacation. So the thing that we really want to manifest that we really could dig in and get it done is the thing that we put down in June. If we just waited a little longer and did our vacations 
in July and the beginning of August, we'd be in the season of ripening when our job on the planet is to collect the sun and to become sweet and to, you know, let our colors begin to change, let ourselves step into this juicy new role that we just worked so hard to bring forward. And this is just the, it's just the teaching of the, of the walk of life. These teachings come from indigenous cultures. This is not Ariana inventing something. These are ancient, ancient teachings that every indigenous culture has moved through. We have learned as humans to watch the cycles of nature and to follow them so that we could have food, so that we could know when we needed to make our teepees warmer and when we could pack them up and move with the buffalo. We had to know what was happening on the earth to do that. And so indigenous cultures today still live in a very different way than we do, we Westerners, because they remember. They remember that they're part of the earth, that they're connected with the earth, that this is who they are. We are not separate. We are not, unless you want to be a parasite, which for me is not an option. <laughs> but we, we live in a very parasitic way in Western culture. And the way that we come back from parasitic behaviors, consumer-based behaviors, all of that is to come into more connection with the natural cycles of life. These indigenous cultures respect life because they rely on their connection with the earth and the earth cycles. And that's why they express in such a uh, deeper and richer way of spiritual, um, spiritual honoring, right? They have, they, you know, there are lots of things that we see in, in indigenous cultures, lots of suffering that goes on in lots of ways, but the ceremonies don't change. The ceremonies go on because they know what the remedy is. The remedy is bring people back to connection with the life cycle. And we have our own mythology for that in unity. We have our own Christian mythology or spiritual mythology, however you place that, that can absolutely fit this cycle. We have a way of bringing people back to who they are so that they are part of the living oneness that we are instead of parasitic on the planet. And so when I take the time to teach this, it, it's a lot of information in a very short time, but it's incredibly, incredibly powerful to move people through the lessons of their spiritual journey at the time that the earth best supports them understanding. It's an incredibly powerful process. And when we think of our holidays as um, incidental and obligatory and exhaustive, which in many ways they are, we have forgotten that they simply are a walk through the natural course of life. And that that walk gives us a chance to really have people experience Christ consciousness, experience the God self in a very real and palpable and tangible way. And once they have that, they, you know, they're going to come to church because they love being at church but you will have given them direct experience, a direct line of connection to the divine. And isn't that why we do what we do? Because that's really what we want is for them to experience the divine so wholeheartedly and, and embody it in such a way that they can go forward and live it. Other questions, comments? I, I think, or, well, lots of things, thank you. <laughs> this was perfect. So glad I was able to be here today. Um, it also, for me, um, taps into the idea of intuitive living, you know, that, that we're living in harmony, but then when we're doing that, we're also um, being able to notice, you know, our own cycles and noticing the ideas that are coming through ourselves. Um, yeah, it, it also serves as confirmation for me because I very much like I'm I plan, you know, my year and um, just different projects that I'm doing or how I'm doing things with Unity Arts Ministry. And I just do them naturally. You know, it's like, I know, okay, in this time of year is when I rest. And this time of year is when all the ideas come flooding through. And I'm like, there's no way they're all going to happen this year. But 
what are the core ones we're going to implement? And, and so I've just been leaning into that cycle for myself, but now I'm like, Hey, yay. <laughs> season for all of it. And we do get, we get a whole bunch of ideas like de- immaculate conception, right? We get a whole yeah. bunch of ideas and then we have to weed through the ones that are actually starting to sprout that have actually like there's activity that shows us that spirit kind of goes here. Okay. This is the one I want you to cultivate. Yeah. And it, you know, people love the idea that immaculate conception is not something that happens, that just happens in a story. It helps us to understand that we conceive the the seed of potential from the divine oneness where we are. That it's not just you have this crazy idea. You have have conceived through immaculate conception, the opportunity to bring this divine seed into living being on the planet. And, you know, we miss that. We miss that. It's one of my favorite things to teach people. Be the receiver of, of immaculate conception. Be the receiver of the divine seed. You really are worthy of bringing that forward. We all are. And it follows so well Unity's teachings about the way shower. You know, this, this was never meant to be an act on a stage in a story we tell. It's meant to be what we live. So, what if you are the receiver of, what if you are experiencing divine immaculate conception? Whoa, that's big. It's yeah, and big, honor that yeah. in others and witness that. And then to create essentially, and the other part that I absolutely love about this is it's like one program, you know, it just, it flows and then recycle, you know, like right. you just thinking about, um, you know, my mind, right? I go to creative projects. So I'm like, you know, just the different creative projects that we do throughout the year and just knowing, okay, these months, those are the projects and not every year thinking about well, what am I going to do that month, but really having it more be about cycles because we're coming back. Right. All of us are coming into the program at a different point in our lives, but we're still going through the same cycle. So the same um, rituals always at the same time Both right work. Like yeah where, if we're, where we're living so another piece that's interesting to me is that you know first creation was not human beings first creation was soil and water and plant life and animals everything we would need to see all of that is what was created before we were the last in the story we're the last so that means that the whole school was put in place before we were put in it, right? And when we pay attention to that cycle, it it doesn't go, okay, well, you went through spring last year, so we're not going to do spring this year. Like our whole teaching body, everything that we're working for as teachers, as spiritual teachers, is to help people to experience for themselves their own Christed self to help people find that God connection that allows them to know that they are God expressing and to become more and more of that. That is what we do every single day, all year long, year after year after year after year. And we try to find different language to do it. Ministers struggle with, what am I going to talk about this month? How am I going to move through this? I've been teaching for 11 years. What am I going to teach this year that I didn't teach before? You don't have to teach what you didn't teach before. Every year that you live on this cycle, in my experience anyway, and I've been doing this since I was 26, every year that I walk this cycle with awareness, new things come to me. It's kind of like when you're in a healing process, you know, we tell people it's a spiral. You heal what you need to heal right now, and then you walk the spiral again and go, how come this problem is back up? Because you're ready to heal the next layer layer of it. The same thing is true with the people we serve. They're healing, they're coming back around to new things and healing things on several layers. And they're learning things on several layers. Every year that you walk them through a time of death and and repeat for them why it's significant in their life that they allow things to die, that we are both creators and destroyers. If we keep creating on this planet, we will destroy the planet ultimately, right? I mean, we are creators and destroyers. We have to balance those two energies in our life. So every time you walk through this cycle with them, 
some new teaching will come to you when you come back around to any time of the year because you are naturally going deeper into this as well. And it, it, will, it will simplify life for you. I am deeply grateful as always for the amazing work that you guys do in the world and um, always so honored to spend time with you to uh, to talk through to have any chance in any way to support you in the good work that you do because I know that every day with all the tools you each have in all your different capacities you are helping people to do just this, to cultivate Christ consciousness, to bring forward their best self, to live in a different way in a world that needs answers uh, because we're struggling. And uh, I just want to once again say thank you for making time with me and for allowing me a little touch of your life. And um, I will be back here in a couple of weeks and we can talk more about this. I'll send this slide out today and then I'll get the video edited and up online. And uh, when we come back in a couple of weeks, I'd love to hear then, as you're thinking into your next year, um, I'd love to hear some of your ideas and do some brainstorming around maybe even the kinds of activities you could have in your church that, uh, that would reflect whatever seasons you feel might be difficult to talk about. So just give, give those things some thought. Um, you know, our second session, is always a it's a QA. We can talk about any problem that's going on. We can talk about anything at the QA. It's an open time for you guys to bring anything to this forum and for us to share and collaborate. So I'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.